now, last year we reported on the Prime Minister's vision of combating climate change by driving forward the use of low carbon vehicles. But 12 months on, are we in danger of being overtaken in the race to develop cleaner cars? We charged up David Thompson and sent him around an electric circuit. It's a lean, mean flying machine. The Tesla Roadster Sport, a top speed of 125 miles an hour, almost 300 horses under the bonnet, from 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds. Oh yes. But here's the bit the muesli munchers all like. All of this oomph comes from an electric battery, means it's clean. And what that means is, you can still have your fun and help save the planet too. As the lads at the test track here will tell you, I am not the next Jensen Button. But cars like this are supposed to be the future. Not just because they're frankly a lot of fun, but also because they could help dramatically cut carbon emissions while keeping all of us on the road. And that's why some politicians love electric cars. But do they love them enough to put their money where their mouths are? The government's committed just over £500 million to the electric and hybrid vehicle industry. That's been welcomed by manufacturers, but a few weeks ago, the Independent Committee on Climate Change said around £800 million was needed for consumer incentives like tax breaks and rebates alone. And compare the level of investment here to what's being done elsewhere in the world. Take France. They're spending 2.5 billion euros on a programme they believe will lead to more than a quarter of all new cars there being electric by 2025. Then there's the United States. They've got a loan package worth $25 billion to help mass car makers like Ford and Nissan begin to replace the American gas guzzler with cleaner vehicles within the next decade. And how's this for a deal? If I bought one of these in Colorado, it would set me back roughly £60,000, but the state government there would give me the equivalent of £24,000 towards it. Now while Tesla might be an American firm, a lot of their product is actually built in Norfolk. But they worry that Britain might be left behind unless our government gets its act together. Well, I think the, uh, the thing we should be doing is doing something. Um, a lot of their policies are pretty much invisible to consumers, which is a real shame. Um, consumers need to see that action is being taken so that they can actually start to believe that electric vehicles are a realistic proposition. The thing I'd love to see them do is 0% VAT on zero emission vehicles. It's an obvious, big, visible um, policy um, and it would actually really help catalyse the marketplace, bring new manufacturers in. <laughs> There are British success stories. This is a Modec. It's an electric vehicle built here in Coventry and praised by no less a person than Barack Obama. In fact, Modecs are selling like, well, hot vans pretty much everywhere. Except here. Ninety percent of the Modecs built at this factory are sold for export. The Obama administration has given the company and its American partner almost $40 million to promote the brand. It allows them to build another 400 vehicles for the US market. Other overseas customers are also heavily subsidised by their governments too. If you look at France, our customers in France are getting €5,000 and in sometimes higher than that. In the Netherlands, they're getting €8,000. Uh, and so. You, those incentives do make a difference. It's not a case of wanting to give unfair advantage to a new technology and pick a new technology. It's about creating a level playing field such that those technologies can get happily accepted into the marketplace. Bill believes there is good news. Britain's at the forefront of electric vehicle know-how. The bad news? It might not stay that way. The UK has a market-leading position in the adoption of 
and development of low carbon vehicle technology, which is great for meeting the government's targets and everyone's global targets on global emissions. If we don't act now, I think there's a very real danger that we will lose that technology overseas. But the government insists it does have a good story to tell. Major manufacturers like Toyota and Nissan are choosing the UK to develop their own low carbon projects. There's money for developing practical alternatives to petrol and diesel. And, like everyone else in this film, the Minister wants Britain to lead the way. I don't think we're being left behind. Uh, the government has made a very important uh, decision, taken a very important stand, that we want Britain to be a leading player in the transition to low carbon transport. So through the provision of funding for the demonstrator projects uh, for vehicles, uh, which are happening in the UK over the next year, through provision for a charging infrastructure so that we've got points in the ground where people can charge these vehicles, and for consumer incentives, I think we've got a package that stands comparison with anywhere else in the world. Perhaps for now, but this is a technology and a market that doesn't stand still. This is a race. This is a, uh, a competition amongst different nations around the world. As an example, in France and in Germany and in Japan and the United States, governments have offered very, very large amounts of money to stimulate their electric car industries. So the UK still has an exciting opportunity and has not fallen out of the race, but the government has to take more initiative right now to develop the electric car sector. Electric vehicles aren't the only show on the road, but they are an option which is becoming increasingly popular. Politicians here have a choice. Either go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our foreign competitors or risk being left in the slipstream. David Thompson reporting. Before we go, let's get a closing news.